So today I want to teach you how to make potato candy. It's a really inexpensive homemade candy that you can make with your family. My grandmother used to make this for my father when he was younger and um, they didn't have much money and it was a really inexpensive way to have candy around the house. Uh, so I want to pass on our tradition to you. The ingredients that you'll need to make potato candy include a potato, a box of powdered sugar, some peanut butter, vanilla extract, table salt, and milk. As far as utensils and tools go, you'll need a pot for boiling water, a bowl for mixing, wax paper and a rolling pin, and a spoon, a fork, and a knife. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is put some water on the boil, and you're only gonna need just enough water to submerge the potato, which is only a little bit. So the potato is gonna be the glue that holds the dough together for your potato candy, and you don't need this much potato. Uh, usually, as in the case of my grandma, when she makes potato candy, she usually does it when she's making mashed potatoes or scallop potatoes, and just saves a little bit of potato off the end uh, to make for candy for dessert. So you're really only gonna need about what you can fit in the palm of your hand, about an eighth of a cup after it's cooked and mashed. So now I've peeled and cut the potato, and you want just about as much as gonna fit in the palm of your hand. I don't usually measure it, I just eyeball it. But then you just take it and you stick it in your water once it's boiling, and you're gonna set your timer for about 10 minutes. 10 minutes is usually enough to make sure the potato is soft enough to mush with a fork. And now I've drained my potato after it was 10 minutes and I checked it for mushiness. And then I'm just gonna stick it down in my mixing bowl. Make sure I get my pieces. Okay, so now we're gonna start the process of making our dough for the candy. And this is when you're gonna need your milk and your vanilla and your salt. And the beauty of potato candy is that you really don't need to measure anything. It's all kind of by eye. Um, but if you're a stickler for measurement, you're gonna want just about a tablespoon of milk and maybe a half a teaspoon of vanilla and just a dash of salt. Okay, now you want to mash your potatoes and mix all the ingredients together. And you want to just smush everything and start mixing it together until you form a thick, pasty-like consistency. And you really want to make sure you mush your potatoes as much as you can so there's no lumps. And you just keep mixing and mushing. So this is the consistency you're looking for, just a soft, mushy, smoothed-out potato paste. and. Now is when we're going to start using the powdered sugar. Um, you don't want to add it all at once. And again, we're not going to measure it because you just add it until you get the consistency that you want. But you're only going to add a little bit in at a time before you start mixing. So I'm going to go ahead and just kind of dust enough to cover everything. Just enough. And you can see how much I've put in there. And that's what we're going to start out with in our mixing. Okay, and so we're just going to start mixing our sugar and our potato stuff together. So now I've got a lot of it mixed. I'm going to go ahead and add in some more sugar. And we're just going to repeat this process. And you just keep mixing. You could actually do this in a food processor if you wanted to, to save your arm because as the dough gets thicker, it gets really hard to keep churning it around and around. But for the sake of tradition and uh, less things to clean, we're doing it the old fashioned way. So now I'm on my fourth go around of adding sugar in. And as you can see, it's getting harder for me to stir. And if you look, I'm really starting to get that dough-like consistency. But it's probably gonna take another round or two of sugar. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in my fifth. And we really want it to form into where it doesn't look wet anymore. And like, it'll become like a ball of dough. So now I've got the consistency that I want. If you look, I've got a big ball of dough. And here comes the fun part. I'm going to dust my hands with some powdered sugar um, because the ball is still a little wet looking. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get powdered sugar on my hands so I can knead this dough and get the final touches on creating the consistency that I want because we want it to not be wet to the touch. We don't wanna see it glistening. I just work this into a ball, pick up the sugar and the extra pieces that are down in the bowl. And I just keep doing that until it's no longer wet and then it's dry to the touch and it doesn't stick to my hands. Okay, so now we wanna get out a sheet of wax paper because it's time to roll out our dough. 
and just lay that down and you're going to want to dust the wax paper with powdered sugar and you want a lot of powdered sugar there you can't have too much because you want to make sure that your dough isn't going to stick when you add it onto the wax paper to roll it out okay so now we're going to lay our dough out onto our wax paper and we're going to take our rolling pin and start rolling it out and if you don't have a rolling pin before my family got one we used to use a can of pam non-stick spray cooking spray so just really anything that you can find in your house that is cylindrical and hard is going to work to roll this stuff out you're going to want to keep adding sugar to your dough just dusting it on because you want to make sure that it doesn't stick to your rolling pin and to the paper so I'm going to go ahead and just dust my rolling pin as well to make sure it's not sticking. And then I'm going to keep on rolling and you want to roll your dough as thin as you can. Nice and thin because we're going to roll it up in the end and we want to get as much surface area as possible. Okay, so we're just going to keep rolling until we get like a rectangular shape. It's not going to be a perfect rectangle. It's going to be more of an organic type shape, but we're going to end up rolling this up into a roll. So we want it to be kind of evenly shaped all the way out. Okay, so now I'm done rolling and I've got my rectangular-ish shape of dough. And the next thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to get this off of this wax paper. And instead of actually just peeling it from here, I found that the easiest way to do it is to lay a second piece of wax paper on top and then flip it over and peel it that way. So I'm going to take it. And don't be afraid to make a mess because... By this point, you've probably already made one. It comes with making potato candy. And now that I've flipped it over, you can see that I'm just gonna slowly but surely peel this wax paper off so I don't rip my dough. And now it's time for the peanut butter. Okay, before we spread our peanut butter, we're gonna wanna cut off this jagged edge, the edge that we're gonna start rolling on because it makes it easier, but we wanna take off as little bit of candy as we can. So I'm just gonna come straight across here and take that little bit off. And if you're a sugar freak, you might just wanna eat that. It tastes pretty good by itself, but I'm just gonna stick it to the side for right now. And the next step is going to be peanut butter. And don't be afraid to put too much peanut butter on because there's no such thing as too much peanut butter and it'll just come out of the sides as you roll it. So, like I said, there's no measuring when it comes to potato candy. So, just put on as much peanut butter as your heart desires and then just spread it out evenly across your candy. So, this is what it should look like when you're done spreading your peanut butter. A nice, thick, even layer across all of the dough. And now we're going to start rolling and we're going to use the wax paper to roll so we don't mess up our dough and rip it by trying to flip it with our hands. So you fold the dough over to start with and then you slowly peel it back and do another roll. And we're going to continue rolling and you just kind of lift the paper and put some tension on it as you roll with your hands. You'll find your way. You just want to put as little tension as you can because you don't want to rip your dough off the paper. And you want to keep going until you get all the way rolled up. All right, and now you've got your roll, as you can see. And we're just going to take the roll and transfer it to a platter or a plate, whatever it's going to fit on, depending on how big you made it. And we'll take our finished product and just place it in the fridge. And it needs to refrigerate for a couple of hours, um, maybe overnight, but just enough time to harden up enough so we can cut it. So now our potato candy log has chilled for two and a half hours, which is usually enough time. Um, the reason we chill it before we cut it is because if you cut it before you chill it, it's gonna squish and it's gonna turn into like oblong, long pieces instead of nice circle pieces. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is cut off the end pieces because they're not the prettiest. See how they're kind of falling apart? They're all together. I'm gonna go ahead and just eat that. It's really good potato candy. 
now that I don't have to talk with my mouth full, you're gonna go ahead and cut these off by sawing because it's the best way to do it without squishing the candy. I'm gonna go down the line and do that, but I'll give you a preview. That's what each roll is gonna look like. It's a nice swirl, and we got a good amount of peanut butter in there, so it's gonna be a really good batch of potato candy. And here is our final product, a beautiful batch of potato candy. It all together cost about a dollar to make this batch of candy with the ingredients that we used and the amount that we used to make it. So it's just a really cheap, fun, homemade candy that you can make with your family around the holidays. And uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy.